today's video, I'll be looking at Unit 1, Core Principles of Chemistry, for the Edexcel exam board. And specifically, I will be covering atomic theory and electron configurations. So in general, um, Unit 1 has five subtopics, uh, which include energetics, atomic structure, bonding, and introductory organic chemistry. And I will be doing videos to cover all of these. So today I thought we would start with the basics, which is atomic theory. So John Dalton is the scientist who was credited for proposing the atomic theory, and the theory explains several concepts that are relevant in our world today. So he started by asking questions like what a pure gold necklace is made of, um, also, what makes a pure gold necklace different than a pure silver necklace? And what occurs uh, when pure gold is mixed with copper? So these are the things that he um, sort of wanted to answer. Um, and he came up with um, a few theories, which um, some of them have been disproven now, but still um, are quite relevant. So number one um, is that he came up with um, the idea that each chemical element uh, is composed of extremely small particles that are indivisible and cannot be seen by the naked eye, which are called atoms. And atoms um, can neither be created nor destroyed. So up here um, is a picture of a helium atom. The purple dots and the red dots represent the neutrons and protons in the nucleus and the black area around the nucleus represents um, the electron cloud. Uh, the second thing that uh, John Dal Dalton came up with was that um, all atoms of an element are alike in mass and other properties, but the atoms of one element differ from all other elements. So for example, here we have gold and silver, and um, the atomic mass of gold is 196.9, whereas the atomic mass of silver is 107.8. So that's um, the difference in those. And uh, the third point that he came up with is that for each compound, um, different elements combine in a simple numerical ratio. So for example, um, in the production of methane, we have one carbon atom combining with four hydrogen atoms to form methane, and the ratios are kept the same, so we have one carbon and four hydrogens to produce methane. Um, so now we can actually use all these three points to on answer these questions that he sort of asked himself. Um, so a pure gold necklace is made up of atoms, and also a pure gold necklace and a pure silver necklace are different because they have different atoms. So then when you mix pure gold with pure copper, we get rose gold. So this is simply the gold and copper combining in a simple numerical ratio. So uh, this, this, this work was carried out in um, 1760s, well, in, in the 1800s. So since then, a lot more research has, has been done and some of, his, um, some of these points have been disproven. How, uh, for example, so the first rule um, was proven to be incorrect um, because scientists were able to divide atoms in a process called nuclear fission. The second rule uh, was proven to be incorrect by the discovery that not all atoms of the same element have the same mass, so um, they're now known as isotopes. But nevertheless, these failures sh show um, Okay, so that's atomic theory. So let's now look at um, the discovery of electrons. So here on the left, um, I found these two um, pictures of a cathode ray tube, and they were invented by Michael Faraday. So basically a cathode ray, um, well, cathode rays, rays are a type of radiation emitted by a negative terminal, which is known as the cathode. And um, 
it was discovered by passing electricity through glass tubes from which the air was uh, mostly evacuated. So um, the radiation crossed the evacuated tube to the positive terminal, the anode. So the cathode rays that were produced by the CRT are invisible and it can only be detected by light emitted um, by the material that they strike called phosphorus, so that's represented here by the light. Um, phosphorus um, are painted at the end of the CRT to reveal the path of the cathode rays. So, as I say, so this is where we would see the light. Um, it was discovered that cathode rays travel in straight lines and have properties independent of the cathode material, so whether it was gold, silver, or whatever else. Another significant property of cathode rays is that they are deflected by magnetic and electric fields in, in, in a manner that is identical to neg negatively charged material. So in, in, so in, in these two examples, um, so th this is the electron gun, so the green line represents, um, represents the flow of electrons. And here we have a A negative and a positive um, deflection plates. So since now we know that electrons are negatively charged, they would be repelled from this terminal and would be uh, more inclined to go to the positive because they are attracted by the positive charge. Therefore we can see this bend in the flow of electrons. Therefore the light is produced here. And the same can be seen here. So um, as the electron pass, as the electron pass through the deflection plate, they are repelled from the negative terminal and are attracted to the positive terminal, creating this bend in the flow of them, and therefore the light is shown, um, can be seen here. So because of these observations, uh, Thomson concluded that cathode rays are negatively charged particles that are located on all atoms. And it was later on um, when George Stoney um, gave the term electrons to the cathode rays. So cathode rays, um, well, they used to be referred to as cathode rays, are now known as electrons. And another thing to know about is the plum pudding model. So after Thomson discovered the electron, he proposed the plum pudding model, which is shown here on the right, with um, so it stated that the electrons, so with the minus signs, float in a material that is positively charged. Shown there. Okay, so let's look at proton and neutron discovery. So let's first look at the discovery of the proton. Um, it happened in 1909 uh, when Ernst Rutherford performed a series of experiments um, studying the inner structure of atoms. So he used the plum pudding model, which we talked about, and he predicted that particles um, in an alpha beam would pass through the matter unaffected, unaffected with a tiny amount of particles slightly deflected. And the particles would only be deflected if they happened to come into contact with electrons. So in order to test this, um, he shot a beam of alpha particles at a thin foil of gold, Around the gold foil, he placed sheets of zinc sulfide, and these sheets produce a flash of light when struck by an alpha particle. However, the experiment um, produced results that contradicted um, the hypothesis, and it was observed that a great majority of the alpha particles went through the foil, but then some particles were slightly deflected, and a small amount were greatly deflected. And some of them were thrown back in the same directions that they came from. Um, so this is shown here. So this was the original hypothesis that um, when the alpha particles are, um, that they would just simply go through. Sorry. But the reality was that some went through, some were deflected back where they came from, and some had a very small um, deflection. So that again uh, was how the proton was discovered. So then, Based on these observations, um, he came up with the model called the nuclear atom. So in this model, the positive charge is held in the nucleus, 
located in the middle of the atom, and then outside the nucleus, um, there are atoms, um, well, outside the nucleus, um, there is a, you know, a large space which is empty, and the model also stated that, um, So that's a discovery of the proton, and in, so on the right, um, the discovery of the neutron, and James Chadwick in 1933 discovered um, a new type of radiation that consisted of neutral particles, and it was then discovered that these neutral particles came from the nucleus of the atom, and this was the last discovery that completed sort of the overall picture of the atomic model, so the electrons, neutro neutrons and protons, and, and these are the subatomic particles that make up um, an atom. So this is just a summary view, um, so we've now seen where and how the discovery was made. So this is what we know so far, is that inside the nucleus here we have protons, shown in red, that have a positive charge, and we have neutrons in blue, that have no charge, and then around around the nucleus um, we have electrons which are negatively charged. Um, so I mean, it's it's much easier to to imagine the electrons sort of whizzing around in orbitals around um, around the nucleus, but the more appropriate um, or the the more correct the, the correct way is to think of it as um, an electron cloud because you would never really be able to tell exactly where an electron will be at a particular moment because they, they move so quickly. Therefore, um, the electron cloud basically represents um, the idea that 95% of the time, if we look within this region, we will find an, an electron somewhere in that region. Uh, so the important thing to know about the subatomic particles is that obviously a proton has a plus one charge, neutrons are zero, as the name suggests, they're neutral, and electrons have a mm, one minus one negative charge. In terms of the mass, um, protons and neutrons have a one um, mass unit, which is AMU, atomic mass unit. So protons and neutrons are one, and electrons, um, we generally say, the, because the mass is negligible, so can almost put zero because it's so tiny. Okay, so as we mentioned before, um, with Dalton's theory, uh, the discovery of isotopes. So Dalton um, said that atoms of the same element. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about isotopes. So isotopes are atoms of the same element uh, with different masses. So they have the same number of protons and electrons, but a different number of neutrons. And because it's only the difference in the neutrons, it means that the, all isotopes of the same element will react in the same way because chemical reactions only involve electrons. So here I've got an example of um, carbon. Carbon have, has three isotopes, so carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. And as we know, <coughs> all isotopes have the same number of protons and electrons, but different number of neutrons. So um, and we can see that from, from, this, this, from this diagram here. So we've got carbon, C is um, what we can see on the periodic table, so C means it's carbon. Um, this number six um, represents uh, the number of protons, so we can see that they're all the same, and, but the mass number, which is at the top here, is different. So let's say for carbon-12, 12, 12 minus six gives us six, which is the number of neutrons. So there are six neutrons here. In this case, we have seven neutrons, and in this case, we have eight neutrons. So again, this shows us, although it's carbon, but there are a different number of neutrons within the nucleus, meaning that it will have a different, um, will have a different mass because of that. 
So let's just quickly review some of the terms we use so far and also link this back to the specification. So um, on the specification under 1.3a, it's asking us to look at these terms and make sure we're familiar with them. So we've already discussed, um, discussed atoms, so just to um, repeat, it's the smallest part of an element. It cannot be broken down. Well, it can be with nuclear fission, but generally it cannot be broken down. It contains subatomic particles, so including protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atoms, overall, they are electrically neutral, um, as there is um, the same number of protons and electrons. And as we know, electrons are negative and protons are positive, therefore um, uh, overall is neutral because the protons and electrons cancel each other out. So an element uh, consists of atoms with the same number of protons, so it has the same atomic number, and again, you cannot break it down. Um, isotopes, we've just discussed, are atoms of the same element, but with different masses. So they have the same number of protons and electrons, but a different number of neutrons. An ion is an atom or a group of atoms that carries an electric charge. So a cation is a positive um, ion, an anion is a negative ion. Then we have the term molecule. Molecule is when um, we have atoms that are chemically bonded together. So for example, we have diatomic molecules, um, which means that there are two of something. So for example, chlorine, fluorine, and nitrogen, or oxygen, all come um, as in a diatomic form because they're more stable than we. Um, a compound is formed when two or more elements are chemically bonded together. So a common example would be um, sodium chloride, which is table salt, or water, which is H2O. So that's a compound because well, a compound, you can say water molecules, but it's more more common to call water a compound because we've got blah. Okay. 